everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this Tuesday. It is Tuesday, right? April 22nd, 21st. Oh, no. Jeez. It's going to be one of those days, Courtney. It is the 21st, right? According to my phone, Tuesday, April 21st. So glad to have you with us. And Courtney, it is great to see you in your quarantine queen sweater. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah, you know, it is the 21st. It's also Queen Elizabeth's birthday. I believe she's 94 today. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a way to celebrate all the queens in the world. And considering <laughs> that, you know, I feel like we're kind of friends because of my weird dreams that I've been having oh, yeah. about Queen Elizabeth. So might as well just roll with it, I guess, right? Yeah. Quarantine queen. Well, you look great. And I realize we are twinning today. We're going to get to your artwork behind you in just a second. But it looks like you have a brand new joy box behind you. And I have a brand new joy box here on set. The one that we had from literally a month so ago beautiful. held on for dear life. The flowers, yeah. most of them were still alive. And they have now resumed deliveries, which is fantastic news for this local business we love. I know, it's so great, and uh, they, they did a special delivery to me too for the home studio. So beautiful, I'm so glad that they are up and running um, for delivery, so reach out to our friends at Joybox. It's, it's so beautiful to have this um, here, and it smells amazing, and I know Derek, yours looks great in studio as well. Yeah, well, we, uh, we're so glad to have a new one, and uh, you know, Joybox, along with so many other businesses, I know they're just anxious to get back to 100% full steam ahead, but they have gotten creative just like so many other companies have and they've got a great team and they're gonna get through it we all are together right they certainly are I, absolutely and you mentioned the sign so you know who did this sign actually um, isn't that cute it's it looks so great. pretty I love the creativity and the artwork Astros colors yeah this is by Eloise and it's Grandma Bobby's granddaughter, Eloise, you know, Kathleen Orr, um, that is her daughter who made that. I believe she's in fifth grade, and she did such a great job. I love kind of like the, you know, Art Deco kind of theme to it. It is very nice, Eloise. Nicely done, and keep them coming. It's, uh, it's a great way to brighten up Courtney's home studio. I know we need to get something a little brighter for this studio. I'm missing out on the artwork around here. Hey, so speaking of bright colors, I hear uh, you've been spending a lot of time shopping online, Courtney, which is something I know you love to do. And now that Lent is over, you're able to just start spending again. <laughs> but you're shopping for new Selena makeup? Like there's a new Selena makeup collection? <gasps> Y'all, oh my word. Yes, on Mac, um, Mac.com, the Selena collection dropped, as the kids like to say, today at 10 a.m. And um, it is fantastic. I can tell you, I did get my hands on them. So I was in a waiting room for like 35 minutes before I could actually get on the site to buy it. Um, it's a couple lipsticks, glosses. I did buy the Bitty Bitty Bomb gloss. Um, <laughs> there's pencils and there's like an eye palette. The makeup bag that looked like a, like a rhinestone bustier, you know, that she used to wear. Um, that unfortunately sold out before I could get my hands on that. But I was very excited to see that today. It was almost like you know back in the day when you'd get in, excited for a concert and you'd have to get in the waiting room the queue remember those days when we used to go to concerts um <laughs> that's basically what i did today for makeup <laughs> well i had no idea that it was such a big deal or frankly that it was even happening until you told me this morning so uh, i can't wait for you to bust out the new the new makeup that must be some makeup if people are going to wait around for in a digital waiting room for about half an hour hey we have some big congratulations in order right now for one of our team members and she she really is. We often call her the glue that holds this little show together every day. Erin Montoya so and her family, they are welcoming a brand new member. That is Cole Joseph Montoya, 7 pounds, 15 ounces, born last Monday, April 13th. And there's big brother Case right there looking very proud. So handsome. Congratulations to the Montoya family, Erin and Michael and uh, they're sweet boys. Oh my gosh, so cute. You know, I remember, um, I, and I, this is gonna be really sweet. I love this picture, because I know um, Aaron was super nervous about Case embracing the baby bro into the mix, and um, that picture, I know, it warms my heart after talking to Aaron, and this is just gonna be so sweet. It's such a sweet relationship, like my dad says, until they start beating the crap out of each other. <laughs> Well. Which happens in, in boy-mom's boy worlds. 
<laughs> well, maybe they'll just Not be best friends. literally, but you know, they, they do kind of, you know, they battle. <laughs> they, I, I think they're going to be just fine. They'll be just fine. And uh, congratulations once again to Aaron and her husband, Michael, and of course, little baby brother, Case, who's the older brother now, right? And we want to hear from all of you. Yeah. Please share your baby news, your baby announcements. And I know that right now we're hearing a lot about weddings, and so many weddings have been postponed, right? Things that were planned for this year, the summer, or now, who knows when. Maybe they're rescheduled for the fall or even next year. But baby Baby showers, this is another right. thing that a lot of people are struggling to figure out how to celebrate, right? Because clearly, if you have a baby on the way or someone you know has a baby on the way, you want to still be able to mark this moment and celebrate. But today, we have our friend Nina Spears from Baby Chick. She is going to walk us through how we can do a virtual baby shower. They can still be so much fun. Everything from sending the invitations to playing the games and dressing up and all of that. It's something that uh, we all want to celebrate, right? Don't skip the baby shower. Just celebrate a little differently. Right. Yeah, I mean, you just have to, we all have to adapt to the times, right? I was supposed to go to a baby shower for a dear friend of mine, her first, Rachel, and her husband, Andrew, and this was supposed to happen the first weekend in April, I believe, I don't know, whatever. It came and went. And, um, you know, it's it's sad that she's not going to be able to have that, um, but this is a great alternative. I mean, everybody's doing Zoom calls and happy hours, so it's a great way to, you know, shower the mom-to-be and the dad-to-be um, in, in a new way and still be able to send them a little something and maybe they can open it but it's it's a great way to celebrate for sure oh yeah and we the zoom call thing too I think it makes it sort of more memorable in some way you know you we will never forget the birthdays right. the baby showers the weddings of 2020 that either happened on zoom or that were postponed last night we actually had a friend whose birthday it was yesterday and and uh and her wife set up a, a zoom call with all of us there were like 25 people and i'm telling you when we all sang happy birthday oh together it sounded really really terrible it was it was really bad i wish someone had yeah, recorded it yeah but i it. hope somebody recorded it you <laughs> it know was what i mean so bad because that's so great to remember <laughs> it was a great memory okay. but seriously we all started singing and we thought oh man have you been watching these concerts like over the weekend celine dion did that thing with andrea bocelli and somehow oh. they've got it all figured out so it sounds you know maybe slightly off but still really really good maybe they could do a little tutorial on Amazing. how we can all how we can all zoom sing that well because ours was I'm telling you well first really of all they are professionals correct I mean like well <laughs> they, all, they all sound you, amazing you're saying we're not professionals I mean we we can we can sing no, on singers. television sometimes yeah. for a living you know if you're a television host in Houston Courtney you're supposed to also sing on television it's a prerequisite right or so I've heard oh <laughs> so, mm -hmm. hey, back to the baby thing, that. did you hear? <laughs> so Amy Schumer, right? I mean, Amy Schumer is so funny. She's, I mean, I know her humor is a little bit off color sometimes, but I like that she's self-deprecating. She doesn't take herself too seriously. Well, she and her husband last year, Chris, her husband, Chris Fisher, so last May, 2019, they had a baby born and they named him Gene, so Gene Fisher, but his middle name was Adel, or Atel, A-T-T-E-L, okay, so Gene Adel okay. Fisher. And so there was an issue. Okay. There's an issue with the name, and they ended up changing it. And here's why. So once they posted the name on social media, people were pointing out that when you said Gene Adel Fisher, it sounded like the name sounded kind of funky. Are you with me? No, Gene Adel Fisher. <laughs> what am I missing? Gene Adel Fisher. Just say, Am I saying it and I just don't know? Say the first two quickly without the last name. Gene Adel. Gene Adel. I don't get it. Fisher. I'm sorry. They were saying that it sounded Genital? like... <laughs> well, there you said it. Yeah, Was like part of the body. that I'm not supposed to say? No, so people... You can say the word. I no. mean, so people were saying that it sort of sounded like part of the body. So 11 months later, they have announced they have officially changed Adel to David. So we can all rest a little easier. It's Gene David Fisher. How about Thank that? Thank God. You clear, Interesting. <laughs> you clearly don't care well, about this story, you know. do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm not a follower of Amy, so, mm, you know, not, I've never laughed 
I don't know. I don't get it. I feel like maybe it was like a weird, I don't know. You've I never know. laughed? Just not my, with her. <laughs> okay. No, I don't think she's very funny. You know what? There, oftentimes, I do think that if you are a stand-up comedian or comedian, right, it's, it's such a tough gig. And we, mm -hmm. we hear all these stories about a lot of uh, stand-up comedians, like ha having a lot of personal struggles, right? And we, of course, uh, we've had Jimmy Fallon on the show. Um, we've had Heather McMahon on the show. And with Amy Schumer, I, I guess I just give it to anyone who's willing to put... Uh, themselves out there and put their lives out there. So even if you don't laugh here and there, even if she's not your cup of tea, I still applaud her for just right. going for it, you know? Going for it, oh, living life. Absolutely. Exactly. There's, there's a space for everyone. If I like, you know, if we can say that, there's, there's a space for everyone. There is a space for everyone. So I know you mentioned this on the yeah. show, I think last week or maybe two weeks ago, about using your car as an office or maybe even <laughs> running out to the car to, I don't know, have a little snack, even if you're just parked in the garage or in the driveway. Mm -hmm. well, well, it turns out, Courtney, you're not alone. 53% of parents surveyed admitted they had actually hidden in their car to get away from their spouse I and children it. at some point. And, and a bunch of them also, I a very it. high percentage, also using their cars as an office because it's the only way you can block out all the noise, right? Only way you can block out all the noise. I mean, there, I, I've hidden in the closet to, to get on a phone call. Um, the car is actually good because you can lock the doors and all you can see is like outside of the kids like, <laughs> can lock the door. You know, they're like trying to figure out why they can't get in the car, you know? Um, I, I actually recently just left. I told Orlando, I'm like, I'll, I'll be back. I'm just going to go for a drive. Because oh. I feel like th this, is, this is it. This is like all we have right now. And so for anybody, I'm tired of walking. I mean, the, wa the multiple walks a day. I was like, I just want to get on the road. And let me tell you something. You, there's no traffic. I mean, you're getting places in like seven minutes. It's really amazing. It, it is, and I just turned the music up, and I was just driving. Look at me, just driving by myself. It was so peaceful. Actually, at one point, I just turned the music off, listened to the car on the road. Who knew? Oh, well, that is a very nice sound. It, it, Sunday Drive, when I was a kid, a Sunday Drive used to sort of be a thing, and maybe some people still do it, but I feel like here in Houston, it's probably a disproportionately low amount of folks who actually do the Sunday Drive because we're also tired of driving by the time right. the weekend comes. You know, traffic here is so bad that a lot of people just want to get out of their cars, so it is interesting that we are in this temporary time where people actually want to go to their cars and take a drive just to escape. I, I think it's good too. I mean, it is. It takes it back to again a simpler time, right? Like, let's get in the car, let's go for a drive. I always think of that in like an old school car or something, like somebody's driving in a convertible or just a cruise, right? You just want to go drive around. Um, I, I just feel like there's so much traffic, so you have to. If you're wanting to do that, quarantine time is the time to do it because nobody, nobody's on the road. You could actually go for a drive. Yeah, yeah, I remember those days. We had, growing up, we had a, a gigantic Pontiac Bonneville, a sedan that was just, I mean, it was the Ugh. size of a, a cruise ship almost, it felt, as a kid. It had red yeah, interior like and white on the outside, and yeah. that car, every time we would stop at a stoplight, the engine would die, and we'd have to, oh man, it was a terrible car. But when it did go, it, would, it would just, oh, it was like smooth sailing. <laughs> it was those were the days. I know. Do you wow. remember? I remember there's two stories about the old cars. So one, uh, and speaking of like how large it was in my mind, right? Like you were just saying how big your mom's car was. Um, it just seemed like it was enormous. And I remember sitting in the car with um, my, it was Aunt Sylvia, but she was a cousin. So out of respect, we called her aunt. Um, but it was her like big Lincoln Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting in the front seat from her and literally I had to like yell because I didn't think she could hear me. She was driving, but there was so much space between her and I in the front seat that it just seemed like she was, you know, 12 or 14 feet away from me. It was crazy. The other thing, and I know that you've done this, did you ever like sleep in that back in window? In the back window you know, the where area, the speakers like, were. In the back? It was dusty and the speakers, so you, you could like, put your head down. down on the music and there was this vibration and uh -huh. that smell of dust just was yeah. so disgusting but familiar. Uh, oh yeah. Right there, yeah. 
<sighs> I know. That was a good one. I never no want to go back belts? to those How times. How did we survive? <laughs> it was bad. It was <laughs> no seatbelts all over the place. Living in this lawless land of Just the 70s around. and 80s. It's awful. <laughs> Take a wide turn and everybody in the car shifts. <laughs> Everything was in black and white, but like a slight hint of pink. <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, before we get to today's show, quickly, it. Courtney, I know we're tied on time, but I know you have a special shout out to our friends over at Brookwood, one of our favorite communities. Two of my friends live there, Vicki and Kim. Hi. I hope you're watching. And your friends over at Renovate are doing a really great thing to give back to them. You know, this is really great. And, and Derek, you're the one that told me about Brookwood. Um, you know, there's such a great, uh, it's of course a nonprofit residential facility and vocational program for adults with disabilities. And um, it's in Brookshire, so it's like 40 miles west of Houston, not super far. They have 110 residents, 120 day workers, all adults with disabilities who depend on Brookwood for income. Their restaurant and of course their very popular nursery have been hit hard by social distancing. And you can help them um, by going to brookwoodcommunity.org. Also, one of my favorite places to shop in town, Renovate. When you shop with them this week, they are donating 20% of every purchase from their store to the Brookwood community. And I know, Derek, that holds a really special place to you, especially um, the, uh, the nursery there. The nursery there every year, you know, they grow tens of thousands of poinsettia plants and they do their big open house. They make Christmas ornaments, but year round they have this gift shop open. So once it reopens, please head on out there. It's a bit of a drive, but it's a great drive. And uh, you will meet people who are just nice as nice can be and so talented. So uh, thanks for letting us know about that, Courtney, and our friends at Renovate for giving back to Brookwood as well. We're thinking of all you guys during this uh, strange and trying time. But shifting gears back to what's coming up on today's show, the cast of NBC's This Is Us, Chris Sullivan, Chrissy Metz, Sterling K. Brown, Susan Kelechi Watson, Mandy Moore, Justin Hartley. Guys, we got to sit down with them, learn more about what happens behind the scenes of their show and by the way as you might imagine they are some of the nicest people in the business and it turns out they have such a good time on set that sometimes you know between takes they have major laugh attacks so uh, we're, we're gonna learn more about what happens with those friends that is such a great show. And you guys, we talked about this. If you're having a baby, you're planning, you were planning a shower for a friend, this is the time that you're now talking about virtual baby showers. We are gonna tell you everything from the invites to the games to play. Nina Spears, the baby chick, you've seen her here on Houston Live. She's fantastic. She's gonna share all her tips to help moms to be celebrate virtually. Plus, once again, we are highlighting one of our favorites, a farm, an urban farm located just minutes from downtown is offering drive-through produce from seed to plate. It is part of their mission to make sure everyone has access to fresh and healthy food. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back. You know, Houston's own Hope Farm has a recipe for success. They grow fresh, affordable produce in the midst of Houston's food desert. Yeah, and it's right outside downtown. We've taken you there before on the show, and in light of recent events, they are now offering drive-through services to make sure everyone has access to healthy, fresh food. I'm Gracie Kavnar, the founder and CEO of Recipe for Success Foundation, and I'm here today at Hope Farms, which is one of our initiatives to teach, empower, and inspire healthy eating. We're 15 years old this year, and little did we know it'd be such a momentous year that would change our lives. We're a nonprofit, and like everyone, we've been severely impacted uh, by this pandemic. In fact, it's pretty much turned off all of our income streams, and we're we're, lit we're literally fighting to survive. We've had to suspend uh, many of our programs. Every week we do a Saturday market and people come from all over and we have our own fresh vegetables. We have live yoga classes people can take. We have cooking classes and gardening classes. We love it. And it's all about community building. And we realized we couldn't do that anymore, but we still wanted to make sure that we were providing our fresh produce to folks. So we put all of our produce online. So we created an online catalog of, you know, it's like kale and radishes and you name it. And we set up a drive through market on Saturdays from nine to noon. Hello, how are you doing this morning? 
you can pre-order everything and prepay and it's all backed up and ultimate social distancing, right? We hand it to you through your car window. And so it's been heartbreaking to see and witness all so many of our near and dear chefs having to shut down their chef-owned restaurants. And so we reached out to several and said, hey, do you have something shelf stable that that's fresh that we can sell? We'll put it up on our catalog and sell it for you at our market. And so we've been doing that too. Like Ben McPherson at BOH Pizza makes fresh pasta and pizza for us every week that people add to their produce order. It's been interesting. Uh, we think we're gonna keep that part. I mean, I think there's a lot of things that we're doing now to adapt to this situation that are not gonna go away. One of the things that that we're about is inspiring the whole community and connecting folks with their food from seed to plate. And, and every year we do a big free Earth Day festival. We think of Earth Day as uh, Hope Farm's birthday. So we were heartbroken to have to cancel our festival. We decided that, um, forget it, we weren't gonna cancel it. We were just simply going to adapt it. We're gonna live stream our entire Earth Day Festival on Wednesday, April 22nd, which is Earth Day. We go live at nine in the morning and we'll broadcast straight through till two in the afternoon. So it goes from farm walks to cooking classes and gardening classes and meeting our bees and learning about bees, meeting our chickens, meeting our goats, learning how to compost. So every uh, quarter hour has a different content piece that we pulled out of our original Earth Day uh, schedule. Supporting the farm, growing food is something that we can still do and we are committed to doing. And we invite you to uh, participate in our programs, buy our food and support us if you can. We're doing our best to support the community and we deeply appreciate the return favor. So amazing to see that they have adapted to this time. The, the grounds are beautiful. The catalog of produce that's available, it's really fantastic. And we do have more information about Hope Farms on our website, that's HoustonLife.tv. So great, and I love that you can order online and just pick it up, they load up your car. Uh, I can d guarantee you we will be there this Saturday morning from nine to 12. Still ahead on Houston Life, the faculty and alumni of Sam Houston State University have opened up their doors to their sewing lab to make cloth shield masks for those who need them. You know, we were asking you guys on social media today about talking about baby announcements and how you're doing it during these challenging times. And check this out. Tina posted, here's my sweet John excitedly announcing the arrival of his baby sister to the world. I love that. Look at how, this cute face. I know. Huge smile on his face. Congratulations to the whole family. And Patricia wrote in, big brother David introduces little brother Michael James Jr. Also another proud big brother right there. So so congratulations to all. Uh, again, strange times, but uh, we're all going to get through this, and we love seeing your photos. Keep them coming. Absolutely. And after the break, guys, how to have a virtual baby shower during COVID-19. We've got some really simple steps to celebrate a memorable celebration for an expected parents. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to Houston Life. You know, many events, of course, have been canceled because of coronavirus and social distancing. And that, of course, includes baby showers. But there is a way for parents to be to still celebrate this joyful moment with friends and family. Yeah, don't cancel it. It needs to be celebrated. Nina Spears, co-founder and CEO of Baby Chick, is joining us now with tips on how to have a baby shower virtually. Nina, it is great to see you there at home. I know you're juggling family and running a business, but uh, a lot of people can use these tips today. Let's start with the first one, sending out a digital announcement or invite. And this is something that a lot of people were already doing so many free ways to do it. Exactly. Once you've determined who is going to host your shower, whether you're going to do it yourself or someone else is going to host it, definitely send out that invitation letting your guests know where they need to log in to be able to attend your virtual shower. That's the first step. 
And I also love this because, of course, this is done through FaceTime, Zoom, Google Hangouts. This is all stuff that we've mastered over the last couple of weeks, you know? So let's talk about how we decorate because being planning the party and the decorations, we can't forget that even though it's being done virtually, right? Exactly, exactly. So once you have that all squared away, the next thing you need to think about is where you're going to host your virtual shower. Are you gonna do it in your living room, in your dining room? I recommend picking a spot where you can decorate behind yourself. So kind of like what I've done here, I got did a little sign, have some flowers, have your whole setup so then your partner or whoever's in your house with you can bring over your gifts and yeah, be able to have it all decorated. And then the next thing, besides the whole uh, get up behind you is make sure that your guests send you your gifts, whether they drop it off at your door or mail it to you before your shower. So that way you can open it with everyone logged in. That is such a great tip. And uh, again, this is something that wouldn't be a huge adjustment for people because so many people already order gifts online and have them sent ahead of time. Now, many of us have been extra cozy and comfortable at home, but this is one occasion you recommend, Nina, that people take a shower, maybe consider putting on pants or a nice top <laughs> and brush your hair, do your makeup, almost like you're going out to an in-person event. Exactly. This is a big moment. You should still feel celebrated, feel beautiful. You're going to hopefully, you can even record your virtual baby shower and have that video of you chatting with all of your loved ones. So yes, get up, get showered, do your hair and makeup, feel pretty, feel beautiful. So you can just feel right on your day. It's still a big moment that you should, you know, pamper yourself. I think that that is so perfect. That's right. Give a reason to celebrate. And um, the other thing that's usually part of baby showers, of course, are all of the games. But you say we could still play these games virtually? Yes. So most people think, oh, with games, you can only do it when you're in person. But that is not true. There are several games that you can play and still do it virtually. You can do The Price is Right, where you have maybe your host sends you some of your essential baby products, whether that's diapers, wipes, you name it, and you show it to your guests, you know, on the computer and they guess who, you know, or how much that price is and whoever gets, you know, closest to the correct amount without going over wins. So you can still do fun games, you know, guess who's the baby. If people send in uh, their, a picture of themselves as a baby and, and you have to guess which, which person is who from their baby pictures, there are still tons of fun games that you can do virtually. So don't skip out on the fun. Anita, I had mentioned earlier on today's show that last night we had tried to sing happy birthday to a friend of ours and everybody was singing. It was like kind of a mess. So one thing that you recommend, which I think is a really sweet idea, is that you have people one by one in each box on your computer screen share a nice memory for the expectant parents to be. A memory or a blessing or a prayer or something uh, that's an extra special, meaningful memory. Absolutely. So something that we do in blessing ways, I actually like to do also in baby showers. Baby showers, we tend to really focus a lot on the baby and the gifts are all for the baby, which is great and wonderful and needed. But this is also a time to celebrate the mother. So to virtually tell the mother, you know, how proud you are, how she's going to get through this, because it can be a very scary time right now for, for moms. So to be able to say positive birth stories, to tell her how great she's doing, how beautiful she is, just to go around and say something sweet to her, that's just just going to to be with her for the rest of her pregnancy and childbirth and so it's it's a wonderful memory to do that I highly highly recommend and I think it's great too because once this um, celebration is recorded and you go back and actually hear um, people's voices um, vocalizing those sweet thoughts I just think that that touches your heart even more um, which I think is such a great idea and Nina earlier you did say to send the gifts ahead of time whether that's via the mail or dropping off on the porch because it is acceptable to be able to open up these gifts and have the mom-to-be kind of show what she is receiving right 
Absolutely. That's, that's, I think a huge part of baby showers is to see what did everyone get mom and people love to ooh and ah over the latest baby things. So absolutely. That's a huge part of the baby shower is to open the gift. So if you get something from someone to open up and say, Oh, look at how cute this onesie is that I got, you know, and, and shout out to the person who's there. People, people love that. And you know, it's again, such a celebration. So as long as you mail your gifts, and it doesn't matter if it's in, you know, a, a box. It doesn't have to be perfectly wrapped. We understand under these circumstances, but still being able to open and thank that person and have it be an event is is wonderful. And even if you hate the gift, pretend you like it. Nina Spears, CEO of the Baby Chick. I'm kidding. Don't worry, folks. I'm kidding. Cheers. Be sure you have a drink on hand, and it's great to see you. Thanks for all the tips. Yes, cheers. Make sure the mama has a drink. Cheers to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to you, Nina. And to keep up with Nina, just visit the Scene on Houston Live section of our website. Still ahead on Houston Live, they are one of television's most loved families. We are sitting down with the stars of NBC's This Is Us to learn more about their hit show. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back. NBC's primetime drama, This Is Us, follows the story of three different triplets and their families. It's, of course, heartwarming, very emotional. Grab the Kleenex for every episode and keeps viewers coming back week after week. It sure does. I sat down with some of the stars of the show to learn more about what happens behind the scenes. It's one of the most talked about shows on television. Can I walk the red carpet with you tonight? I know. Each week, the twists and turns on This Is Us keep fans crying, laughing, and guessing what's next. Come on. Come on, guys. Up, kids. I call the middle. I had the chance to sit down with some of the stars of the show and quickly found out they're just as likable in real life as they are on television. When you jumped into this series, did you just immediately know that this job would sort of be unlike any other job you've had? Hmm. Good question. It's a good question. You know, I remember reading it, reading the script and thinking, man, if I'm able to do this show, if I'm able to be lucky enough to get cast in this show, this would yeah. be amazing. And then that happened and then you you shoot the pilot and then you're like, wow, if, if people think this is as special as I think it is, this is going to really be great and they'll pick it up. And then they pick the show up and then you're like, wow, I hope people watch it. And then when people watch it, you're like, wow, I hope people continue to watch it. So it's this constant <laughs> thing. And only until probably like two years ago. Yeah. Were, were we like, oh, we're going to be here for a while. This is great. And we can yeah. relax a little bit, you know, and yeah. enjoy the moment. This show is so universally appealing because at its core, it really is about family. Mm -hmm. And it's about what unites us is far stronger and more powerful than what sort of divides us. And living in crazy times right now, it's nice to be a part of sort of cathartic entertainment that, like, puts all of that aside. And it really is about just sort of being the best version of yourself. Based on what I see on Instagram following you guys, it seems like a lot of fun is had yes. behind the scenes. You have to have some balance. <laughs> you have to sort of... The, the great thing that I don't think is often talk about talked about with our show is I think there is such a great balance of levity. I think mean, people would be shocked if they came and watched our set and like sat in the corner and sort of like watched how much laughter there is in between There's all so that crying. There's so much laughter. Like, There's this heavy, heavy, heavy scene going on and they're like, cut, okay, we're going tighter. And then it's just like... People are laughing. An eruption of laughter. <laughs> There's too much laughter going on, and I can't laugh with this prosthetics. Oh, that's like, right. We're like, yeah. we're like ripping your face off. So, totally, totally, exactly. <laughs> I sometimes have to like la 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 go in the corner and just zone out because it's too, it's too funny. Sterling K. Brown and Susan Kalechi Watson play Randall and Beth on the show. I'm a big fan of their behind the scenes photos on Instagram, and it turns out they're big fans of my haircut. What are you looking at? The hair, the hair game. I just, yeah. I appreciate I it. About it. I really. Yeah. Do you want to know a true story? My boyfriend and I, we cut each other's hair at home because we're always so busy. What? Not trained. I know no, it's a thing. That it's a thing. That's too adorable. Too like this is too straight. O M G O M G Y G. Oh my god. So thank you for saying that. You're welcome. Wow. Kudos to the boyfriend, man. Yeah. So back to this is us. Susan and Sterling told me these roles seem to touch fans in a whole new way. When you are out in the world interacting with regular people and fans. Are you finding that this role gets the average viewer to just open up to you and like tell you their story and how your role impacted their life? Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's like for you, mm -hmm. but like on multiple occasions, mm -hmm. 
I'll have people just be like, and they'll be like, and yeah, just, start just start coming wow. to you, or whatever, and you're like, oh, okay, we're hugging. Right, now. we are it's hugging. Like, okay, this is cool, and yeah. it's all sweet, it's all love, but it's it, it. This character in particular has elicited a warmth that I that I haven't experienced before. And there's a level of intimacy that people feel they already have with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's a little. Sometimes it catches me off guard. I'm just gonna keep it 100 percent because sure. they approach you like you. We know each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I had to. It took me now until season four to now go, oh, they, you don't know them, Sue. Like, take yourself off the hook. You know that feeling sure. of like, oh my God, what's their name? Oh no, we know each other, I don't know. <laughs> and then I, now I like know like, oh no, you, you most likely don't know them, but they're talking about the fact that they know you from this weekly relationship they have with the character. Right. Yeah. Chris Sullivan and Chrissy Metz play Toby and Kate on the show. They explained how some of their fans are next level. When I was potentially going to be leaving Toby at the altar, um, people were like, I will abandon this show. I will sue NBC. People were irate. And I was like, just wait a minute, guys. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, the twists and turns of this is us. So I'm so appreciative that people are so, you know, connected and then obviously willing to, uh, Wow. Yeah, I would love to see a yeah. lawsuit against NBC <laughs> for the death of Jack Pearson I mean, for like emotional damages or yeah, something. Yeah, right, right. But yeah. honestly, like, it's really nice to have someone so invested. And it turns out the actors consider themselves fans of This Is Us as well. We could read the script and be surprised, and then the episode comes to television and they've done things in the editing or with the music that changes everything again. It's, it's, a, it's a constant... Um, yeah. It's Joy. so cool that you're able to watch it as a fan. Yeah. It also I'm a seems... a huge fan of myself. <laughs> For sure. I love watching uh, myself. And why shouldn't you be, yeah. Chris? <laughs> Just, I watch my performance and I'm like... You wow, only watch your wow. scenes, right? Wow. Yeah. You yeah, fast forward fast through the rest of like them. Sterling, Sterling, yeah. Sterling. Yeah. Here we go, me. <laughs> Find the good stuff. <laughs> Do you guys love the characters as much as fans love these characters? I love Kate for what she's becoming, but sometimes she can be a little sassy, and she a little bit of a type A sometimes, and she thinks she knows things, and I'm like, oh my gosh, give him a break. He's done so much. So sometimes she gets on my nerves with that, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like I said, I am a huge fan of Toby <laughs> and the actor who plays him. It's, yeah. it, every, time I, every time I watch an episode, I'm just like, what will he, what will he think of next? Where do you get these zingers, Toby? Right. The humility is overwhelming, it really is. It is. You have to separate, you have to separate from the art, you know, you have to. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. I thank feel you. like this is one of those shows that has defined this whole generation. People will always talk about this as us, so it's oh, great. Thank so. you so thank much. You. Thank you. They will. Thank you, well, that's sure. sweet. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, so Chris. Nice. Chris, so nice Chris. Nice Chris. Nice Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. Keep you. that solid. Thank thank you. You. I was gonna say, listen. Thank you. Thank you, Ziva. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know what I think is so great to see them in their element, you know, outside of their characters, because I love each and every one of their characters and to see them sort of in real life, it's such a cool thing um, to hear them talk about the show and laugh together and laugh with you. I mean, what a great experience. It was great. It was sort of like sitting down with a bunch of old friends, you know, and of course you can watch This Is Us right here on channel two uh, and you can stream seasons one through four on many different streaming apps, including the NBC app. But yeah, it's a hit show and it's always sort of a relief when you respect someone's work and then you meet them and they're actually super cool because we've all like met people who are not so yeah. cool. So uh, I can't say enough uh, nice things about them and it was certainly a treat to sit down and share that all with you. Very cool story. Also, guys, Sam Houston State University, you know, the faculty and the alumni have opened their doors now to their family and consumer science sewing lab to make cloth face shields for those who need them. 11 sewers created 100 handmade face shields in just two days, and they're not done. Lauren Kelly chats with the lead on this amazing project coming up next. Sam Houston State University College of Health Science faculty and staff have gotten really creative. They have opened up the Family and Consumer Sciences Sewing Lab to make cloth face shields. Look, if it were me sewing, that would be a big mess. That's why we were leaving it in the hands. Led everybody by Dr. Roseanne Keebley. She has taken the lead on this project. Welcome to Houston Life. 
Well, thank you, Lauren. Thank you for inviting us. We have a great team of volunteers from the College of Health Sciences who are helping with this project, and it's really been successful, and we are now in high demand for the face shields because they're fabric, and because now in some cities, they are required to go outside and you have to wear a fabric face shield or one of the surgical masks, which are almost impossible to get your hands on. Absolutely. Now, doctor, let me ask you this. How long does it take to make one mask? Well, the way we have done it, we have a production line. So if somebody is a novice sewer or they maybe have not sewed in a while, it could take maybe 20 minutes to do. We have a great production team now, and by the end of about three or four hours, they are now making 45 masks. We have individuals who cannot sew, so they are the fabric cutters. And then we have individuals who will press on the fusible interfacing. And then we have individuals who will start sewing them. And it's basically just taking two pieces of material like this, and you're making a pillowcase, basically. Now, when you guys are all in the sewing lab, I want to make sure that everybody knows you are taking precautions, you are oh, yes. social distancing, and making sure that everybody's staying six feet apart. Yes, we are, and that was one of the requirements for us to do this project. Our dean, Dean Runyon, and Provost Eglisair, they wanted to ensure that we would be maintaining safety. And the good thing about what we do, we are all health, family and consumer science, nursing people, so we really embrace that. Uh, the great thing about this lab, it's very spacious. There are eight sewing stations, so all the sewers are at their own station. Great thing about this room also is there a sink, so when everybody comes in, they wash their hands for 20 seconds, they dry them, and then they start working. And everybody has gloves to wear if need be, and they also have their mask. Well, are you guys working full hours? I mean, are you going in at 8 a.m. and staying till 5 p.m.? Are you working full days? We are not working full days here uh, because all of us are actually teaching and working also. Our classes are now online to service our students. So we start at about 10 o'clock in the morning and then we end about three and four. But basically it's you sew, go home at night and you work some more. And that's what we have been doing. Well, we appreciate, I'm sure everybody over at the Sam Houston State University community really appreciates what you're doing. I'm sure it didn't take a lot to get people to jump onto this. Were people really excited and willing to be a volunteer for this? Yes, yes. In, in fact, we started thinking about this the week after spring break. And I had talked to the chair of Family and Consumer Science, Mr. Ron Reed, and talked to him about it. We got approval from our dean and our provost, and then we sent out an email. And the individuals who could come and help, they have done so. An article ran in the Huntsville Item yesterday, and as a result, we've actually gotten requests from Huntsville Memorial Hospital, and we have gotten requests from other individuals in the community. So we see that this is really gonna fulfill a need in our community. And that's what we're all about at Sam Houston. We're about service, producing citizens who are gonna be very successful. This is gonna be something that people are going to remember that they helped with and they were able to do something. And that makes people feel good. We like to be engaged. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Roseanne Keithley with Sam Houston State University College of Health Science, your entire faculty, your staff, your volunteers, everybody in that sewing lab, we just appreciate what you're doing. We know it's just what you can at the time with what you have, and it, it's just wonderful. We think that that's an amazing uh, effort to be a part of for this community, and everybody truly appreciates it. Everybody in there, please stay well. And for more information, just log on to HoustonLife.tv.
date night cocktails tomorrow. We've got the cocktail ninja and his trusted assistant, also known as his wife. Of course, you <laughs> recognize Trevor and his wife, Emily. Well, they are sharing two date night cocktails you can make right at home with just three ingredients. It's fantastic. All right, and we are also celebrating the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Many have a new appreciation for nature during quarantine. No better time to find ways to help preserve the planet. You can take part in the City Nature Challenge through a fun app where you can observe and record wild species around the Houston area. That's a great way to celebrate. And Courtney, before we go, let's get to some of our social comments. <laughs> I know. I love this one. Linda posted on Facebook, love the show. So funny talking about growing up in the 70s with no seatbelts. We used to put our heads in, in the back window to look at the sky. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, you look at the sky, you listen to the music. Glad we have seatbelts now, though. <laughs> Stacia wrote in with a tip for your nails, Courtney. She says you probably have some Elmer's glue lying around. Just have the kids paint around your nails, paint the nails, and then peel off the glue bordering your nails. So thanks to all of you for sending in your comments. Thanks so much for joining us today on Houston Life. We had a lot of fun. Let's do it again tomorrow. Sound good, Courtney? We did.